Lord be with you. It is a joy to be in worship with you today. I'm Pastor Bromley, and today we are celebrating. We are celebrating a birthday. Now, this isn't a birthday for one of us, although maybe you had a birthday recently. Today, we're celebrating the birthday of the church. And not even Union Church, we're celebrating the birthday of the whole church, the day in which the disciples who had followed Jesus, who had been waiting after he had gone back to God to figure out what they should do next, the day in which the Holy Spirit came to them and gave them the power to speak to all kinds of different people and to show people the power of God's love. And on that day, that day when they went and started telling people about God and Jesus, that day we celebrate as the birthday of the church. Now, we have some traditional colors on this day. We often wear red, and if we were together in church, the paraments and the um, adipendia, which are the things that hang uh, on the lectern and the pulpit in the chapel, all of those things would be red. And I bet as we listen to the Bible story for that day, you'll figure out why red is the special color of this day. So pay attention for that. This day also has a special name. It's called Pentecost. And in the middle or at the beginning of that word, there's another smaller word, penta, and that means 50. And today, Pentecost is 50 days after Easter. So we celebrate that after Jesus had been with his disciples for 40 days, he went back up to heaven. And 10 days after that, he, uh, God sent the Holy Spirit, and that was the birthday of the church. So that's what we celebrate today, the day of Pentecost. Now, it might feel a little strange to not be celebrating such an important day together, but maybe you've figured out by now that being at the church doesn't mean that we have to go to the church building. We love our church building, and there's something so special about being together in it, about being together in worship, but we can be the church together all the time no matter where we are, if we can care for each other and love God and love God's world. So our call to worship today is responsive as usual, and your response goes like this. We are the church together. Will you practice that? We are the church together. That's great. So I'll say a line of the prayer, and then you respond, and together we will enter into this time of worship. Through times of fear and times of hope, in our traditions and in our new adventures, united by God's Holy Spirit among us, we are the church together. Amen. We are the church together, and so we join in singing our opening song about the church. It's an old favorite. I know it's at least as old as me, so very old, but it could be even older than that, and Christians have been singing it for a long time. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. I, this is a song called I am the church. Of people with 
many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages, two from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And when the people gather, they're singing and they're praying, they're laughing and they're crying, sometimes all of it's saying, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. At Pentecost, some people received the Holy Spirit and told the good news through the world to all who would hear it. I am the church. the church together. Now, one of the ways that we are the church together, of course, is that we worship together. And usually when we worship together, we speak English because that's the language that most of us here at Union Church speak as our first language. But not all. One of the families who worships with us a lot, their first language is Swedish, which is so cool. Do you know any other languages? Now, in the Pentecost story, the disciples were gathered in the holy city of Jerusalem. Have you ever been to a big city? The one that we live closest to is Chicago, right? Now, Chicago has residents who come from all kinds of different places and speak all sorts of different languages. Again, English, but more, too. There's a large Spanish-speaking population. And did you know there are more Polish speakers in Chicago than in any city other than Warsaw, which is the capital of Poland? We have lots of different languages spoken here, and that is a wonderful and cool thing. The tricky thing about people speaking different languages is that we can't always understand each other, and that can be a frustrating thing. We remember that and we think about that today because part of the Pentecost story is that when the Holy Spirit came to the disciples, it gave them the ability to speak and be understood by folks who spoke all kinds of different languages. So even though they were mostly from the town and area of Galilee, there were people who could understand them even if they'd come from as far away as Cyrene or from Cappadocia or from all of these other cities. And that was a wonderful thing. Now, our prayer today, then, is about understanding each other, not just in speaking languages that other people understand, but sometimes trying to understand other people's perspectives can be frustrating, trying to understand where our brother or sisters might be coming from, or what they're hoping for, or what our parents are asking us for. So our prayer time in being honest with God, we are going to pray about uh, asking God to help us to listen and help us to understand. So I hope that you will either bow your head or lift up your hands or however you feel comfortable praying and join me in this prayer. Will you join me too at the end by saying amen? Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we don't always listen, and we don't always understand each other, much less you. Sometimes we get frustrated or unkind when we don't understand. Help us to look for your spirit and to welcome the understanding she brings. And let us all together say, Amen. Amen. Now, the good news of God, the good news we celebrate always, is that God is with us in the Holy Spirit. And God loves us through Jesus and as the one who made us. And so even though we are sometimes less than perfect, even though sometimes we don't always listen and don't understand, we know that always 
always God loves us and welcomes us back. And so we never have to be afraid to tell the truth to God about who we are. We celebrate that. We celebrate that there is nothing so big, there is nothing so bad, there is nothing in all the world that can separate us from God's love. We celebrate that and we share that love and that celebration and that joy with one another by saying, the peace of Christ be with you. Why don't you share signs of God's peace with those who are with you or maybe even text or call a friend after the service? And then let's join in singing our song of celebration. Alleluia. church's birthday. It's Pentecost. And we celebrate Pentecost by decorating the church red. So you'll notice I have a red cloth in front of me, which I'm going to tell the story today. The story is about Pentecost. So I want to invite all of God's littlest children to join me in focusing in this space right here. And then after I'm done telling the story, we'll wonder a little bit about the story. This is the day of Pentecost, when we remember how God sent us the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can say and do the wonderful things that Jesus did. It happened after Jesus left and went away. God's people gathered in Jerusalem. To celebrate the special Thanksgiving feast of Pentecost. They came from many countries everywhere. Jesus' friends were in Jerusalem too. They were waiting for God to send the special gift promised of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, the sound of a mighty wind filled the room, and the flames of fire opened up and appeared and settled over each of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were so excited 
that they just had to go out and share the good news about God. So they went out and talked about Jesus. And they went out and shared how God raised Jesus from the dead. They heard in their own language. And they asked, what should we do? And Peter said, change your ways. Be baptized. will wash away and be all new. And you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. God's promise to each of you and your children and everyone that God calls. Now, I wonder how the disciples felt Jesus' special friends when they received the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. I wonder how it felt to be so amazed and filled that they wanted to share that joy. I wonder how the people from all these countries felt when they heard Jesus' friends talking about God. And I wonder how they felt being baptized you remember your baptism? You know, I want to take a moment and congratulate our graduates um, that are moving on in the next phase of their life. Many of you remember um, when you were much younger, I shared this story. And I just want to say blessings to you. You know, the gifts that God has given to you, I look forward to seeing what they become, and um, peace of Christ be with you. Amen. I am grateful to Miss Penny for sharing that story with us. And I'm thinking about how those disciples must have felt, what it must have been like when the Holy Spirit burst into the church with gusts of wind and tongues of fire. These tongues of fire didn't look like your tongue or mine. They looked like flames, maybe. And they sat above everyone's head and gave them the power to speak in other languages. And suddenly everyone could understand each other and understand and hear the good news about Jesus in their own language. Before he had gone up to heaven, Jesus told his followers that God would send the Spirit to be with them, but this was maybe not what they had expected. Fire? Language? With gusts of wind? Now, stories throughout the Bible are full of surprises. God surprised Moses when God spoke to him through a burning bush. When God's people were wandering in the desert, God provided manna, which is food to keep them nourished when there wasn't anything else around. Jesus did all kinds of miraculous signs and wonders during his time on earth. He walked on water, he healed people, and he rose from the dead. Pentecost is another amazing story that demonstrates how God surprises and delights us. What kind of surprises can you think of? What kind of face do you make when you're surprised? Think about a happy surprise face. Are you like, ah, or, ah. What does it feel like to be surprised? Have you ever gotten a really big surprise? What was it? 
I think the biggest surprise of my life, or one of them, was the day when my daughters were born. Especially the first two, because we weren't sure if they would be boys or girls. And that day, we heard that they were girls, and we were so surprised. But even more than them being boys or girls, we were just so surprised to finally see and meet the people we had been waiting for for so long. So that birthday, their birthdays, were days of surprise for me, just the way that Pentecost was a day of surprise for the disciples. I'm wondering if God has ever surprised you. Maybe something you were worried about turned out to be a wonderful thing. Or maybe a new kid in class turned out to be a wonderful friend. There are all kinds of ways that we can be surprised. And I think that if we keep our eyes open to looking for God's surprises in the world, we'll find them. And when we find them, we might experience great joy. Now, I hope you'll pause with me for a minute and we're going to take a look at a video that Hattie and I made a little bit earlier and it has another wonderful surprise. If you've been following along in some of my emails and some of the pictures that we've had on the church Instagram account, you know that we had some caterpillars come to our house a couple weeks ago and we've been watching them and taking pictures and they started out as little and black and fuzzy and then they got a little bit longer and then they started crawling up to the top of the jar that they had come in and they went to the lid of it and they formed little kind of J shapes and they sat like that and then eventually they grew little chrysalises. They wrapped themselves up in them and then they stayed very still for a couple days and we moved them, we took the lid off that jar and we put it in a great big container and after the container, eventually, something wonderful happened. If you've never seen what happens to uh, caterpillars who become chrysalises, it might be a big surprise to you. It wasn't exactly a surprise for us. We knew what was going to happen, but it was still wonderful to see. So join me in taking a look at this next video. Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Bromley and I am excited to be with you in worship today. We're talking about Pentecost, of course, and Pentecost is the day when we celebrate the birthday of the church. Now, what's interesting is that people were in religious communities before Pentecost, of course, but on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, came into the room where the disciples were and changed them like in the story that Miss Penny just shared with us. And so they were changed. They were able to speak new languages. And then uh, they went out into the street and they told everyone about God's love. Now we have with us today, Hattie, of course, and also these friends. These are some painted lady butterflies. And when they came to us a few weeks ago, did they look like this, Hans? What did they look like? They looked like caterpillars, right? They were fuzzy and black and a little bit smaller, right? And then what did they do? They went into their chrysalises, their cocoons, and then they hatched and we enjoyed them at our house for a couple days in here we gave them some fruit but now and some some water to drink but now we're going to celebrate this new life and this change by letting them go out into the world just like the holy spirit goes out into the world all right do you want to unzip it yes all right now I'll unzip it all the way. I yeah. think they're gonna fly out. You think they're gonna fly out? Here, let's see. I wanna see a one. Look. <laughs> there it goes! Alright, let me do it. Alright, do you wanna put the strawberry on your hand? Maybe he'll come and land on that. Coming? Is that a 
Well, sometimes they can't find the door right away. It's confusing to them. So let's see if we can help. Can We're I? so careful, right? Because there's the whoop. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what does it feel like? Uh, Don't grab the wing. Just let the body sort of be on you. There you go, Hatch. What do you think? <gasps> hey, there's one more. One more. Because one died. One died. Yeah, that was sad. <gasps> Look. It's hanging on to me. It is. It's sitting on you. That's so fun. Do you think it's getting used to the world? I don't know, but there's a giant X on its eye. There's a giant X on its eye? Oh yeah, those are those the antennas? No. No. Those aren't the eyes. Those aren't the eyes? No, you see the eyes on the body? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to walk it over to the flower and see if it wants to go sit over there? It just wants to stay. It just wants to hang out with you forever. <laughs> Well, friends, we are celebrating today as these butterflies go out into the world. It wants to hang out on a wildflower. It wants to hang out on a wildflower. As these butterflies go out into the world, and we're celebrating the way that God's love also helps us. Oh, there it goes. To be in the world. Thank you, Hattie, for your help. Thank you, Nathaniel, for being a cameraman. <laughs> Now on this day, we're celebrating so many things. We're celebrating the wonderful surprises of God's love. We're celebrating the butterflies transformation. We're celebrating the birth of the church. Now what's something that you often do on days of celebration? Do you either give or get presents or gifts? Well, now is the time in our service where we celebrate the work of the church and celebrate everything that we do together as part of our life with God. And so we share our gifts. If you have a gift you want to share, you can go online to our website, hinsdale.church, uh, and you can go up to the button that says Give Now, and you can make a contribution that way. There are other ways to pledge, too. You can sign up for automatic electronic giving, and then you never have to think about it. Or you could send a check into the church office. There are lots of ways that we celebrate and do the work of being the church together. Please give generously to support that work. Dear God, we give you thanks for the joy of that first Pentecost day, and we give thanks for your Holy Spirit at work in us and in our church, even to this day. We pray that you will bless the gifts we share this day, that they might be signs of your love and your spirit at work in the world. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi there. I'm gonna sing if I were a butterfly. If I were a butterfly, I thank you, Lord, for giving me wings. And if I were a robin in the tree, thank you, Lord, that I could sing. If I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd squiggle with glee. 
But I just thank you, Father, for making me be Cause you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile You gave me Jesus and you made me your child And I just thank you, Father, for making me be If I were an elephant, I thank you, Lord, if I raised my trunk. If I were a kangaroo, I'd hop, hop, hop right up to you. But if I were an octopus, I thank you, Lord, for my fine looks. But I just thank you, Father, for making me me. smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. And I just thank you, Father, for making me be. If I were a wiggly worm, I thank you, Lord, that I could squirm. If I were a crocodile, child, and I just thank you, Father, for making me me. Thank you for being in worship with us today. If you want to keep celebrating Pentecost, you can look in your email or look on our church Facebook page, and you can find this wonderful image from the folks at Illustrated Ministry. It says, filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you want, you can color that in, and you can share it with us either on our church Instagram page, which is Hinsdale Church, or on our Facebook page, which is uh, Union Church of Hinsdale, or you can send it to me in an email, and I would love to see it. You can see it, these tongues of flame. Now, whether or not you are visited by tongues of flame or a rushing wind this morning, whether or not you can suddenly speak other languages, know that the Holy Spirit is with you today. And as you go into the world, into the rest of the week, into your full life with your families, go in the name of the God who made you. Go in the name of the God who loves you. And go in the name of God, in the Holy Spirit, who gives you the strength and the courage to be the church even now. Amen.